Content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Welcome to Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre, McIntyre Retirement Services, Northwest Ohio's retirement planning resource. And welcome into the program. This is your game plan for retirement, Northwestern Ohio's resource for a common sense approach to planning for our financial investment retirement future is Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services. Chris, today talking about that number one concern in retirement, how to make our money last and how to structure a plan to address that concern. Yeah, running out of money is obviously the biggest concern that folks would have in their retirement. It's as, as I build uh, my wife and I's retirement plan as well. It's how do we not run out of money? And I guess, Peter, to even take that a step further is how do we not run out of income? Because having an account that's got a zero balance is a lot different than, uh, you know, I, I might have an account with a zero balance, but I'm still getting a paycheck. As long as we've got the income to cover life expenses, Chris, that is a pretty secure type of situation for retirement. But for many of us, because that account balance represents a good portion of our ability to produce income, Chris, that's where the concern really lies. It truly is, Peter. If you think about it in the world that I live in, you know, we have a lot of school teachers, uh, some government employees that have nice pension plans. They fund those pensions, some union employees that uh, get a very nice uh, pension plan, um, but they might have less savings because of that. And, you know, and that makes perfect sense. They've directed more money into getting that constant a paycheck throughout their retirement. And some of those can be combined with social security benefits. And most people can retire and, you know, that have those types of pension plans and say, Hey, you know what, I've got money that comes in every month. That's what we live off of. I don't, I don't care about what I got in the bank or in investment accounts. I don't live off of that. Now for most folks that are listening today, that's not going to be the case. They have had to save or invest money for the retirement and, all of a sudden they turn off that paycheck and they start drawing money out of those 401k, those IRA uh, platforms. And, you know, now you be got to be, have to become a seasoned investor to figure out how do I generate income without depleting my principal in an incredibly low interest rate environment like we have right now. That makes it even more challenging for, you know, not only us as advisors, but also for you folks as retirees. Yeah, well, you've got to have a plan on how to translate and, and transition that lump sum that you've saved and accumulated into the base for secure, reliable, dependable, durable income that will last a lifetime. That is done with the planning process. And that is part of your game plan for retirement. The written retirement income plan is a component of that game plan for retirement. If you would like to get a written plan for your retirement, a snapshot of where you are currently details about the goals that you define, writing those down so you can work to achieve them and, and know when you've met certain benchmarks, as well as a timeline of executable action items. Simple, easy to understand language, concise, consolidated steps that you can act on. Pick up the phone, give a call. Chris McIntyre offers to put that together for listeners of the program right along with you, uh, an investment of your time to give you more enjoyment of your time, confidence in your time into your financial future. That is what the game plan for retirement is all about. If you'd like to get that in your hands, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. And, and Chris, you're exactly right. Uh, I know from my household, uh, I grew up in a single parent household. My mom was a teacher and during her career, often you know a little difficult at the end of the month to make ends meet. But when she retired, her pension plus social security actually replaced a good portion of her working career income. And she had some personal savings, but it was not really necessary at that time. That was more of her security blanket, her discretionary funds, money that she could leave invested. And I think that's really the goal of the written retirement income plan at the end of the day is to help you identify what is needed for income versus what is available for discretionary investment or long-term growth or more of your long-term security blanket. Yeah, there's no question about it that uh, those that have that 
guaranteed sources of income, you know, lead a much less uh, stress, less stress in the retirement years for sure. Because as we all know, you know, the stock market with the wild swings that we've had here, you know, you know, go back into 2018, they started to raise interest rates. So gold lost, stocks lost, bonds lost, oil lost, lumber lost. I mean, it was a year we had more losses in those asset in, in in all the different asset classes than any other time in history. 2019, nice rebound. Everything was going well. 2020, obviously the pandemic, interest rates crashed, stock market corrected, fueled by this large uh, stimulus package that they're just inflating the debt and now talk of inflation. So, you know, there's just been a in the last 36 months, you can just look at all the things that can happen that can, you know, cause stress in your retirement. And that's why we've always been advocates of laying out, getting the basic expenses taken care of. And, you know, then you can rely on some of your savings for the extras in life. In 2019, when you have a good year, you can go and take an extra trip or book a couple of extra trips and vacations out, look at that second home. And then if you get a 2020 in March, you know, basically a year ago when everything kind of fell apart that, all right, hey, we're going to go back and just live off of our basic living expenses, take pressure off of the investment side. You know, that's just a win-win for everybody. Chris, is it just me or does the market seem much more volatile today than it did 15, 20 years ago uh, as we were uh, beginning that 401k and, and moving through the 90s? Uh, even though the last decade has overall been very prosperous in the market. It just seems like the movements day to day and year to year are, are much more significant. It, they really are, Peter. And part of that is for those of you that are looking at the podcast is, is, you know, we all have cell phones. Uh, we are so much interconnected that we have 24 hour news cycles that is looking for the next bloody headline, if you will. And I, you know, use that rhetorically. Um, no, but, know, but that sells, right? That's what they, that's what they promote. Yep. And they know that, uh, you know, people make emotional decisions by and large. That's why there are so many different colors of cars. And, you, you know, if you can take a, a step back from that and, and still have to realize, and I have to tell clients this all the time is, look, you know, you have to have a portfolio designed around your overall risk tolerance so that you don't have to watch the news channel every single day and worry about, do I sell Tesla? Do I buy IBM? You know, you, you do a well-balanced portfolio so that you can enjoy some of your retirement and, and not watch the business channel 24 hours a day. Well, again, the tool that we most commonly use, we talked about it a lot last week. It's the 401k or the employer-sponsored plan. Eventually, we probably turn that into an IRA. These are the retirement accounts that we earmark to help support us in retirement, the personal savings that we have to complement the social security there. But Chris, we've got to turn that into a plan. And, and if you would, could we take a step back and, and could you maybe take the time to define what an income plan is and why it's different than what most people have traditionally had in their portfolio and, and, and what they've utilized before? Yeah, Peter, and that's a good point that you bring up is, you know, the, the traditional portfolio that people have as they're in their working years is the 401k. And anymore, those are largely driven by those retirement lifestyle funds. Those have become very popular that adjust the balances of stocks and bonds based on the calendar. Um, and then once they transition into retirement is you know, they say, okay, well, now I need to start pulling money out monthly out of my 401k and, you know, and pay my bills. Where what we do differently is we say, okay, out of everything that you have, what's the best time for you to draw your social security benefit? If you're married, what's the best time for your spouse to draw social security uh, benefits? Uh, how do you choose a pension plan if you have it? Do you leave a survivor benefit? You know, that type of thing. Do we match that up with a life insurance policy to, you know, make, help you make that best decision in case you passed away early? And then we carve off uh, a section of that portfolio and go over here and get it and generate an income stream to cover the basic living expenses under all the circumstances, you know, and get something that's contractually guaranteed with some of the biggest insurance companies on the face of the planet 
that have been doing this for hundreds of years. And so provide some peace of mind. Again, if we're building a retirement uh, plan or a portfolio for somebody, we want to lay a solid foundation, right? And then build off of that solid foundation. If you're looking on the podcast, you know, we're recording the show here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, where they have all kinds of hurricanes. And, you know, uh, we had some gale force winds the other day. And I told my wife, I'm like, man, this place is built solid, man. You can't even hear the wind or anything through the windows because they have to build to withstand all of the storms that are going to hit. You need to do the same thing with your retirement planning. How has having that specific written retirement income plan benefited your clients at McIntyre Retirement Services, Chris? Well, they get to come back and take a look at it and see, you know, how we set things up uh, and, and we run some assumed interest rates or rates of return on investments and usually do that on a very conservative nature because if you outperform that, that's just more icing on the cake. So, and we try to look at the worst case scenarios and in real time, you can say, okay, if the mister passes away early, here's the risk that you have. And you can show that to them in real time and say, okay, well, let's take it the other way. And if the missus passes away, and I'll be honest, we, you know, we kill more men in the office than we do women <laughs> because <laughs> men, men typically die first. But, uh, you know, you have to plan for those things. You know, most of us have insurance in case the house burns down. We have insurance in case we wreck the car. We have liability insurance in case we get sued for something else. Why not have some income insurance? Well, again, uh, this is what that written retirement income plan is all about. And the reason why you need that is because when the direction of money changes, so do the circumstances, so do the risks. Contributions are very, very different than withdrawals and creating income as you're building that account and accumulating. A certain set of rules apply. Chris, those rules change almost completely. They do a 180 as you begin to make those withdrawals from those retirement accounts. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you get a large stock market correction and you're withdrawing and you're including the taxation that's going to come out of these IRAs and 401ks, don't forget about that. The government is also a partner in your retirement plan for those of you that have those you know, high six-figure, seven-figure IRA accounts every withdrawal there has got a partner there that you have to pay. And that's the, you know, the state of Ohio, the federal government or state of Michigan, depending on where you live with our client base and Se um, several you know, partners in the mix. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you got school districts and things like that. And depending on how they do some of their taxation, Heidi at the office lives in Gibsonburg, but she pays uh, Perrysburg income tax, and she has to pay Gibsonburg income tax as well, even though she doesn't earn her money there. So, you know, a number of these little different facets, everybody wants a little piece of your money in there, guys. So the taxation of the income that we are creating with that plan, Chris, also a factor that is included and addressed with that written retirement income plan? Oh, most definitely. And, you know, if, if my dealing with somebody that's got a large sum of money in a Roth IRA where taxes might not be that big a deal, or am I dealing with somebody with, you know, basically their entire savings is in the 401k. And that's very common. We're not saying this is right or wrong. It's just, you know, it was easy to save money in the 401k because they took it out of our, t our paycheck every week or every two weeks. And now all of a sudden we've had some investment success over 35 years, right? Over a nice economic cycle, buying more when the when the stocks are down, buying less when stocks are high, that dollar cost averaging that we talk about a lot. Well, Chris, that's another big difference here. During our accumulation years, the savings that most of us did to reach a certain level of success was systematic. It was automatic. It, it happened out of sight, out of mind. We sort of put part of that on autopilot. Whereas when we begin making withdrawals, that's a very conscious kind of process. We have to implement that and, and do it. Most people don't want to retire from their career and become full-time financial planners, having to pay attention to their, their accounts and their assets and their investments and their income 24-7. The written retirement income plan is what allows us the freedom not to have to do that. Sure, it certainly does. And, you know, you have to take into effect the, the effects of inflation. And with software, you know, you can build that right in and say, okay, well, inflation might be 2% right now, what if it goes up to 5%? I mean, you can't print trillions of dollars 
out of make believe and don't think and can't think that that doesn't have an impact at some point. Look at the price of lumber right now is up about 30%. You know, uh, gasoline has gone up a dollar under the current administration here, you know, and I'm not getting political, but you know, gas is getting more expensive. It's closer to $3 a gallon than $2. That's money right out of your pocket. So if you've got money in very conservative investments, you know, even, you know, the average bond yields probably two and a half percent right now. If inflation is running at three, you know, you, you still got to come up with a strategy to stay ahead of inflation. And if you've got, you know, money and certificates of disappointment at the bank earning one percent, if inflation is at three over three years, you know, I mean, you've lost a significant amount of what we call purchasing power. Yeah. Of course, I've got friends and family members right now who are in the process of building homes. And uh, I've talked with them. They said that for about every hundred thousand that the cost of of uh, construction was planned for, that's now costing them about 120,000 to 130,000 because of the inflation of the raw materials. And and so you, you spoke to inflation, you spoke to the market, you spoke to taxes. All of these things are outside of our in individual control. What kind of assumptions are you making with those things when you're designing the income plan? And, and then how does it help us to address those things that are outside of our control? Well, you know, take Social Security, for example. And, you know, a lot of people listening are going to say, well, hey, I get a cost of living adjustment for my Social Security. Yeah, but it gets deducted off of the Medicare premium increases each year. So <laughs> right, if right. Medicare goes up 3% and your cost of living went up too, you don't get any cost of living adjustment. So I typically, you know, will give a very small, if any, cost of living adjustment on Social Security. And for those of you that take it at 62, remember at 65, they're going to start pulling Medicare premiums out of your Social Security. You got to look at the impact of that. Um, you know, I normally use a two to 3% number on inflation. Um, you know, I guess that was probably $10 trillion a debt ago. So we might have to inflate that here. We're seeing the impact that inflation is having, you know, as we mentioned, volatility in the stock market. You know, I mean, that that's where you're seeing some of that tech tech sell off earlier near the technology sector, but you're also seeing it in, you know, for conservative investors in the bond market side of things, the more conservative bonds, obviously, if interest rates go up, bonds go down. And for those of you watching on the podcast, I got my teeter totter going, right? <laughs> um, and then, you know, what typically we have to figure in longevity, Peter. So if your parents live to be 95, pretty good chance, you know, you're going to be up in the 90s as well, even greater than that. My uncle came to visit us here in, uh, in the Outer Banks, and he's, you know, 78 years old and very good health. My grandfather died at 62, his dad, mm. you know, so... so Chris, it sounds like, I mean, Murphy's Law says what can go wrong will, and it usually does at the worst opportune moment. And it sounds like you're sort of Murphy's brother in, in, when you're constructing these income plans, just with the assumptions that you make, very pessimistic or conservative. And, and that way we are prepared if those worst times, worst case scenarios, Murphy's Law does in fact apply to us in retirement. It comes from experience, Peter. We've seen it happen, uh, you know, even this past week or folks are listening to the show here on a Saturday or Sunday. And, you know, we had a client that uh, called up and said, hey, got diagnosed with cancer. And it's like, man, he retired last year, you know, and in 2020, we lost a number of clients, you know, in their mid seventies. And, you know, I mean, you, you've got to plan for it. You've got to enjoy it while you can, you know, uh, all the money in the world doesn't do you any good if you don't have the health to to enjoy it. So you have to take care of yourselves as well. And I'm uh, uh, very um, um, carry a lot of passion about that part of it. And and yet still, Chris, uh, there's a lot of people who are very concerned with running out and might not live life to the fullest, might not be spending enough. The concept of enough income in retirement is a tight rope to walk. On on one side, we could overspend and, and maybe jeopardize future years. On the other side, I think people want to enjoy their life and the money, the pile, the stack that's sitting there in their retirement accounts isn't the most important thing. It's, it's how that money allows us to have enjoyment of our our time and fulfillment, the income plan is what strikes that balance. 
Sure. Yeah. And Peter, you know, let's take a look at it a couple of different scenarios. So let's say we're looking at Mr. and Mrs. Jones that have been married forever, you know, and, you know, uh, there's no second marriages here. So we got a pretty basic plan. They got kids that are doing well. You know, they're going to go through a, tr uh, a cycle in their retirement where early on in the years, they're going to focus on themselves and doing some of the traveling and whatnot that they always wanted to do. And then later in their retirement, maybe in the 70s and 80s, it's like, hey, we need to start planning to give some of this money away, or if we go into a nursing home, that kind of thing where we don't get into the spend down. You know, that's, that's the classic uh, American retirement story. You know, my, I'm going to evolve as I go through my retirement, just like you do through your life. You know, and then, you know, we also deal with a lot of folks that came in later in life with mixed marriages, you know, so that's got pension issues, that's got estate planning issues, you know, where we're dealing with kids from different marriages and, you know, spouses that came in together with money from different marriages and, you know, how do we make all that work? So, you know, a number of different aspects here to take a look at and, and no two of them are the same. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, we probably would agree that some of the, you know, the, the more popular talking heads in our industry here are, you know, playing to the masses. We don't play to the masses. We play yeah. to the individuals. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, there's there's a, a large portion that needs help in, in certain areas. Most Americans need help in the motivation to get the savings going and to get out of debt and begin to build wealth and, and begin to manage it properly. Chris, uh, while you're willing to help anyone, these strategies, a lot of what we talk about on this program is for those that have done a good job in, in being disciplined, in uh, forming those good habits and saving and investing and accumulating, but want to make good decisions with it since they are doing that good job and then want to be able to stop trading that time for money, walk away from that paycheck and, and have what they've saved provide that level of confidence and support that their paycheck and their, their job once offered. And again, that's what the game plan for retirement is all about. That's what the written retirement income plan is all about, a snapshot of where you are and how to achieve those goals. If that describes you, if you'd like that game plan for retirement, or if you'd like to double check your current plan or your set of tools that you have there, the accounts that you have built up and how they will play a part of the retirement picture. Pick up the phone, give Chris McIntyre, McIntyre Retirement Services a call, 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Uh, if you are listening on, on the radio or if you're uh, listening on the podcast or viewing the podcast, you can also go to McIntyreRetirementServices.com. Great resources there. If you are watching watching the podcast. We'll include that in the link below uh, in the description. Also an opportunity to like, subscribe, share. If this information is something that is of importance uh, that you find value in, that you feel friends, neighbors, loved ones, spouses would would also appreciate, be sure to like, subscribe, share, uh, ring that bell so that you're notified of future episodes. All of those things are, are going to be important to stay informed, to um, make sure that those that need to hear this message get that opportunity. And uh, again, Chris McIntyre is the resource for Northwestern Ohio savers and investors taking your planning, your financial future seriously, offers the opportunity to get that plan put together. 800-868-1194. That's 800 868 Six eight eleven ninety four. Chris, we've often mentioned on the program, talked about how money's not a fantastic multitasker. And so this retirement income plan specifically is about segmentation. It's a different type of diversification in retirement to alleviate and address many of retirement's greatest risks. Yeah, no question about it. Money doesn't do 19 different things at one time. Like Peter said, most people aren't very good at doing multitasking as, as science tells us. So, you know, sometimes it's best to have money allocated for income and then have money allocated for investments and then money allocated for that emergency fund. We talk about that in, in the, you know, we use the term buckets quite a bit here on the show. So I've got my income bucket, I've got my emergency bucket, I've got my investment bucket. And your investment bucket might be conservative, you know, just by your risk tolerance or, you know, another listener out here wants to be very aggressive because he's got his income met. He's like, why am I investing so conservatively when I really don't need to rely on those dollars and I want some, uh, you know, above average growth potential? We'll obviously have to use that word here as well. It doesn't always deliver what we want. And, you know, 
Peter, I want to harp on inflation here, if it's okay. Uh, sure. It's been been the buzzword here, obviously, and it has certainly led to volatility in the stock market and in the bond market as well. And for you know conservative type investors, they you know use a lot of bond positions, and you know we're sending some emails out to our clients and whatnot right now. You know, just describing that. Look, you know, fixed income has to be priced every day. A bond gets priced every single day. So based off of the headlines, you know that affects bond prices as well. Sometimes the initial shock of the word inflation is worse than reality, and you know then things will adjust to their come back to their means. But if you look at 2019, remember, we had a huge sell-off in the stock market. Government bonds went up in value. That was the flight to safety. The market recovered and then the inflation uh, talk. So pretty big sell-off in gov longer term government bonds here so far this year. You have to understand that these things happen. These things play out, you know, and that's why you use a well-balanced portfolio uh, you know, around your overall risk tolerance and you have to monitor and, you know, you got to do a gut check every once in a while. But, but Chris, that's another one of the risks that the retirement income plan helps us address. When we look at the question of how much income we can create or withdraw from that portfolio, there's a number of things that that affect that. One is the balance of that portfolio. If it's fluctuating, that's going to be an, an issue with the percentage that we are withdrawing. Wall Street likes to illustrate this as some linear straight line that uh, ascends into the future and, and everything works out fine based on some consistent rate of return. And, and then the question of inflation, um, that, that determining retirement cash flow is not something that is static. It's dynamic. It, it is something that we are going to have to have some leeway and flexibility in. And, and the written retirement income plan helps us with, with that um, over time. It will set a baseline, but it is also something that does have some flexibility in accounting for conditions. Yeah, no question about it, Peter. You know, and we've had some clients that have owned some of the technology stocks or ETFs or mutual funds that have done very well. And in many of those cases, we've carved off some of those gains and put them back into their well-balanced portfolio, right? They may have a growth sleeve and, uh, you know, and that's for longer term projections, but you're exactly right. You know, if I'm pulling 4% out of a million dollars, which is $40,000 a year, and last March of 2020, now my million was 700,000. Okay? You're pulling out a lot more than four to get, uh, you know, that 40,000, you're pulling out about, you know, six and a half percent, seven percent, plus the income taxes that are on top of that. And, you know, we're hearing the word tax increases right now. And if you think they're only going to tax the one percent, folks, you're sadly, sadly mistaken. Yeah. That won't fix it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've, I've uh, seen and read and heard if we just forget taxation, if we just confiscate the wealth of like the top 1%, it doesn't even put a dent in our annual revenue need. And so the bulk of money is within the middle class and the middle class is where uh, we're going to feel a lot of pain for tax increases and changes into the future. Chris, I, I want to make one other point here before we go and just a couple minutes left in the program, but part of the written retirement income plan, social security is a great source of income, typically doesn't constitute everything we need, but we want to make the most of it because if we have an emergency, we can't reach into social security and, and pull out extra for what we need. If we pass away early, social security doesn't transfer on to our next generation beneficiaries. So part of that written retirement income plan is recognizing what Social Security can and can't do, and then making the most of it, trying to optimize that. And a lot of people need some guidance there because it's not just a one size fits all, take it at 62 or take it at 70. Um, you're going to help people really review and analyze their choices and options there to protect as much of their personal assets as possible. Yeah, Peter. And, you know, and I tell a lot of folks, look, it isn't necessarily a right or a wrong answer. It's not that cut and dry, you know, it's what's the best option available for you because none of us know how long, you, you know, you're expected to live. I've had people say, look, I don't need social security. Uh, you know, I'm not going to take it until I'm 66. I'm doing just fine. It's like, all right, but you could take it at 62 and put all that money in an investment account 
you know, and then you've still got all of that money at 66 when you, you know, you're still getting your payment, obviously. Um, you know, it just depends on the situation and what, what uh, individuals want to do. I'm trying to give both sides of the discussion right. here, you know, it can that be it's either, not though. It can be correct. either. And the folks down at the Social Security Administration office, they they don't know the rest of your situation, so they don't provide that kind of guidance. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if for nothing else, that alone, the Social Security analysis report, looking over your options, getting educated is worth the time to get that game plan for retirement. It's part of the written retirement income plan component of that. I encourage you now, pick up the phone, give a call, get the process started, get that plan in your hands, the game plan for retirement, a snapshot of where you are, a discussion of your goals, writing those down, documenting them so you can know that you're making progress toward working to achieve them. And then the timeline of executable action items that you need to take in order to make those goals reality. That's what the game plan for retirement is, is all about. No cost, no obligation for that. Chris McIntyre, looking forward to hearing from you, helping you out, getting that put together for you, with you. 800-868-1194, the number to call. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. And if you're not sure if you have a retirement income plan, Chris, you probably don't. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good good way to put it. Social Security is not a retirement income plan and a 401k is not necessarily an investment plan. That was your place to put money while you were working. And you know, you're typically going to need that income plan. You're going to need that investment plan, the tax plan, the long-term care plan, number of different aspects that encompass the overall re in retirement landscape for yourself. Well, again, pick up the phone, give a call, get that game plan for retirement started today. 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Chris, always a pleasure. We appreciate your time. All right, buddy. It's good to be with everybody. Stay safe out there, guys. Take care. Visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management while insurance products pay a commission which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Indexed or fixed annuities are not designed for short-term investments and may be subject to caps, restrictions, fees, and surrender charges as described in the annuity contract.